déclaration de Russie de sa déclaration. Je ne voudrais pas prolonger cet échange trop longtemps puisque nous sommes réunis là pour traiter d'une affaire de substance importante. J'aurais souhaité pouvoir m'expliquer dans la langue de Tolstoy, mais je ne la maîtrise pas malheureusement. Je voudrais faire juste deux commentaires. J'ai reçu hier, en tant que président du Conseil de sécurité, dans la deuxième partie de la matinée, une demande de tenir une réunion urgente. La demande était formulée pour que la réunion se tienne à 15 heures. Euh, C'était euh, ainsi qu'elle était formulée par la mission russe. À ce moment-là, la présidence a considéré que le débat sur la situation à Gaza, comme vous l'avez vous-même souligné, devait continuer. Il restait environ 25 orateurs à peu près de mémoire et il me semblait nécessaire que, vu la gravité de la situation à Gaza, ces États membres puissent exprimer l'urgence, puisque le caractère d'urgence s'attache aussi à la situation de la crise à Gaza. Et c'est pourquoi nous avons programmé la réunion que vous demandiez d'urgence, de manière urgente, euh, ayant vérifié attentivement avec SCAD euh, et puis m'étant reporté moi-même aux ouvrages de référence, euh, celui de Lauren Sievers et de Dawes sur le sujet. Euh, il y a plusieurs interprétations sur le sujet. Alors effectivement, on peut monter des réunions sous trois heures. Je n'étais malheureusement pas en mesure de le faire euh, hier. Et j'aurais pu euh, également euh, la monter sous 48 heures, puisque Lauren Sievers et M. Dawes expliquent que quand c'est un urgent meeting, c'est dans les 48 heures. Et si on veut que ce soit dans les 24 heures, il faut que ce soit emergency meeting et pas urgent meeting. Et SCAD, pour sa part, est plus général, dit dès que possible, as soon as possible. Donc j'ai monté cette réunion dès que possible. J'ai tenu compte aussi, et je le tiens à le dire, aux représentants russes, non pas d'un souci de politiser ce sujet, mais de besoin pour les États membres de ce Conseil, en particulier les membres élus qui ne disposent pas forcément de toute l'information à l'instant T, euh, de quelques instants supplémentaires pour pouvoir s'informer par eux-mêmes de la situation et avoir aujourd'hui une réunion plus informée et plus productive. Voilà, je vous remercie. Conformément à l'article 37 du règlement intérieur provisoire du Conseil, j'invite la représentante de l'Ukraine à participer à la présente séance. Il en est ainsi décidé. Conformément à l'article 39 du règlement intérieur provisoire du Conseil, j'invite Mme Rosemary Licarno, secrétaire générale adjointe aux affaires politiques et à la consolidation de la paix, à participer Peace à la présente séance. Il en est ainsi décidé. Le Conseil de sécurité va maintenant the aborder l'examen du point 2 de l'ordre du jour. Je donne maintenant la parole à Mme Rosemary Di Carlo. Monsieur le Président, hier, il a été reporté que un plane IL-76 militaire de transport plane crashed in the Belgorod region of the Russian Federation, near the border of Ukraine, killing everyone on board. According to Russian authorities, the plane was carrying 65 Ukrainian prisoners of war, six Russian crew members, and three Russian military personnel. According to Ukrainian authorities, the plane may have been carrying missiles for Russia's military system. We understand both Russia and Ukraine are conducting separate investigations into the incident, and Ukraine has called for an international probe. The United Nations is not in a position to verify these reports or the circumstances of the crash. What is clear is that the incident took place in the context of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and ongoing war. To avoid further escalation, We urge all concerned to refrain from actions, rhetoric, or allegations that could further fuel the already dangerous conflict. Mr. President, in one month, we will mark the tragic milestone of two years since Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in blatant violation of the UN Charter and international law. And today is already the Security Council's fourth meeting 
on Ukraine since the beginning of the year. In recent weeks, the scale and intensity of attacks against Ukraine have only grown, highlighting the dangerous trajectory of the war. Shelling and missile strikes on civilian areas continue to kill and maim civilians and cause massive destruction to critical infrastructure. In total, since February 2022, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights has recorded 10,312 civilians killed, including 576 children, and 19,530 more injured, including 1,277 children. These figures continue to rapidly rise. On 23 January, at least 18 civilians were reportedly killed and more than 130 injured in Rus Russian middle missile strikes across Ukraine. In Kiev, the latest attacks injured civilians and caused damage to civilian buildings, including those next to the United Nations office. In Kharkiv, 10 civilians were reportedly killed and 66 injured. The city continues to experience repeated airstrikes and the consequences are devastating. The recent month is the most intense in terms of attacks and civilian casualties that the city has experienced since September 2022. Aerial assaults also cause loss and destruction in Dnipro and Odessa. Furthermore, on Sunday, 21 January, Eight, 28 civilians were reportedly killed and 30 injured in shelling on the Russian-controlled Ukrainian city of Donetsk. Cross-border strikes are also reportedly expanding inside the Russian Federation, reaching beyond the immediate border regions. The Secretary General has been unambiguous in condemning all attacks on civilians and civilian infrastructure wherever they occur. They are prohibited under international law and must stop immediately. The recent incident in the Belgorod region with its claimed link to a planned prisoner exchange reminds us of the plight of prisoners of war. We remain deeply concerned about their treatment. Since February 2022, the UN has interviewed over 280 Ukrainian POWs who returned from Russian captivity. Just in the past week, our colleagues in the Human Rights Monitoring Mission in Ukraine interviewed 31 prisoners of war who returned in early January. What we hear in these interviews is harrowing. Only very few had been able to communicate with their families during internment. Over 90% say they were tortured. Many said they did not receive enough food or medical treatment they urgently needed. We continue to urge the Russian Federation to provide independent international monitors unfettered access to POWs. The parties must fulfill their obligations under the Geneva Conventions, and we commend Ukraine for the progress made in this regard. Earlier this month, we welcomed the latest exchange of prisoners of war between Ukraine and the Russian Federation. Notwithstanding the circumstances of yesterday's incident, the fate of prisoners of war should not be instrumentalized. We urge the parties to continue pursuing exchanges of prisoners of war. Families of both sides are waiting to be reunited with their loved ones. Mr. President, the war in Ukraine is a war of choice. Its tragic consequences are clear for all of us to see. The longer it lasts, the more death and destruction it causes, and the more it eats away at the norms agreed to ensure and maintain a peaceful and secure world. And the United Nations remains ready to support any meaningful efforts to lay the groundwork for just, lasting, and comprehensive peace in line with the UN Charter, international law, and resolutions of the General Assembly. Thank you, Mr. President. Je remercie Madame Di Carlo pour son intervention. Je vais maintenant donner la parole aux membres du Conseil qui souhaitent faire une déclaration, à commencer par le représentant de la Fédération de Russie.
Завершить наш с вами обмен по процедурным вопросам, хочу лишь кратко отметить, что упомянутый вами труд при всей его значимости не играет никакой роли для Совета Безопасности, это не устав ООН, это не правило процедуры Совета, это чисто point of reference, не более того. И мы весьма сожалеем, что вы взялись определять за нас срочность или несрочность созыва заседания. Мы руководствуемся практикой, наша практика, например, указывает, что После нашего запроса, после предыдущего террористического акта Киевского Белгорода, Эквадорское председательство собрало заседание в тот же день. Вот так поступают ответственные председательства. Ваши действия, при всем уважении, это очень много. Мы потребовали созвать срочное заседание Совета Безопасности ООН в связи с очередным чудовищным террористическим актом режима Зеленского. Вооруженными силами Украины в Белгородской области был сбит российский военно-транспортный самолет Ин-76. На борту находились 6 членов экипажа, 65 пленных бойцов ВСУ, которых перевозили для обмена, а также трое сопровождающих. Только благодаря подвигу пилотов, до последнего момента уводивших самолет как можно дальше от жилых построек, на земле никто не пострадал. Все имеющиеся у нас сегодня данные указывают на то, что мы имеем дело с преднамеренным, продуманным преступлением. Руководство Украины прекрасно знало о маршруте и способе транспортировки солдат к месту заранее согласованного обмена. Он должен был состояться вчера, 24 января, Это уже не первая подобная операция, однако на сей раз, Киевский режим по каким-то необъяснимым любому здравомыслящему человеку причинам решил ее сорвать, причем в самом варварском способе. Как показывает Предварительное расследование, данные террористические акты СУ осуществились применением зенитного ракетного комплекса. Ракеты были запущены из населенного пункта Липци в Харьковской Многое указывает на то, что это могли быть либо американские патриот, либо ИРСТ немецкого производства. Если это подтвердится, поставившие их в западные страны окажутся прямыми соучастниками этого преступления. Подобно тому, как они являются подельниками в СУ, при обстрелах из западных вооружений мирных кварталов российских городов. Этими чудовищными действиями режим Зеленского, если он, конечно, все еще осуществляет хоть какой-то контроль над действиями в очередной раз показал свою бесчеловечную сущность и полную недоговороспособность. То, что он готов приносить в жертву западным геополитическим интересам своих собственных граждан в любом количестве, уже ни для кого на Украине не секрет. На это направленные повсеместно происходящие по всей стране акции отлова украинских мужчин на улице и их отправки на передовую в качестве пушечного мяса, нарушение украинского законодательства. Зеленский и его клика называют этот беспредел мобилизацией. Однако вчерашний теракт идет значительно дальше этого. Ведь солдат, которых планировали вчера обменять, ждали матери, жены и дети. Их обмен был согласован с украинской стороной, как это уже неоднократно делалось ранее. Однако по непонятной для нас причине в Киеве решили уничтожить собственных граждан вместе с сопровождающими их также, как поступило в Киевском пункте в июле 2022 года, нанеся удар по колонии Елены, где также содержались украинские военнопленные, тогда погибли более 50 человек. Возможно, что-то нам всем пояснит сегодня представитель киевского режима. Важно понять, идет ли речь о несогласованности действий украинских военных и чьей-то самостоятельной инициативе, или же о сознательном, продуманном преступлении, не укладывающемся ни в какую моральную Однако все, что мы видим пока, это весьма примитивная и трусливая попытка представителей киевской власти, вопреки очевидным фактам, сбросить себя ответственность за это преступление. Действуя таким образом, они уже откровенно забрались, запутались и закапывают себя в этом вранье все больше и больше. Ведь сразу после теракта Генштаб ВСУ по горячим следам выпустил торжествующее заявление, из которого следует самолет был намеренно сбит именно доблестными украинскими военными. 
And this news was immediately disseminated also in the Ukrainian um, mass media, our BK Ukrainian and Ukrainian Pravda. But as information started appearing that um, the Ukrainian POWs were on that plane, they panicked and started to cover up their tracks. And the first acknowledgement that this was done by the U.S. were crudely deleted from the Internet. At the same time, new versions are being introduced, one more absurd than other. For example, the Ill-76 is being put around that Ill-76 will carry missiles. It was flying from either Egypt or Belgorod, and there were no Ukrainian POWs on board. Another school of thought of Ukrainian propagandists is also not particularly new. Traditionally, they are trying to place the blame on Russia. I have no doubt that our Western colleagues today are also going to engage in wordplay today with the only goal in mind to shield the key of the puppet key of regime as much as possible. They and the people in Kiev could not care less about the Russians and Ukrainians who died because they are second category people and they are simply expendable in their actions against Russia. The Western colleagues are trying to convince their public that such a situation is a good investment, a good business project. And the cynicism of this is just absolutely off the charts. Mr. President, the Western sponsors of the criminal regime are fully responsible for the regime's crimes. Only in the Monday, we are discussing the crimes of Ukraine. Только в понедельник в этом зале мы обсуждали накачку Украины вооружениями. Вы в таких ситуациях делаете акцент на том, что Украина якобы использует его исключительно для легитимной самообороны. Может быть, вы поясните сегодня, какое отношение к самообороне имеет сбитие самолета, перевозящего свои же военнопленные, в рамках согласованной заранее предусмотренной МГПЦБУ. У нас также вызывает глубокое сожаление, что и представители международных организаций в духе самообороны of international organizations and are refusing to comment what the president called upon members of the Security Council and UN leadership to condemn, decisively condemn this and all other acts of terror conducted by the Kiev junta. Silence in this situation only strengthens the corrupt regime of Zelensky that they have impunity in being able to do everything we can to make sure that everyone responsible for this and other crimes of the Kiev Nazi clique that they um, are punished for this. Mr. President, in 2014, the Bandera Junta took down a Malaysian liner MH17 about Donetsk, more than 300 people in Donetsk. Despite the fact that the evidence of the Russian agents is clear, the Russian agents are involved in this crime. Many people on the West have expressed their doubts about the fact that Kyiv could have been involved in this crime. Many people on the West have expressed their doubts about the fact that Kyiv could have been involved in this crime. Many people on the West have expressed their doubts about the fact that Kyiv could have been involved in this crime. Many people on the West have expressed their doubts about the fact that Kyiv could have been involved in this crime. To be dealing with the fact that the Ukrainians down yet another plane, he will not be possible to cover to go over this in silence and hush this up because all of those who died have Ukrainian families who are waiting their return and believe that the authorities will hold up their end of the bargain. But as a result, the Kiev regime sacrificed these people twice. First of all, by throwing them into the front line as cannon fodder, and thereafter, after the light was kept by the Russians. By um, downing their plane. And one more point to that, that needs to be borne in mind, those who are asking us to get involved in peaceful negotiations with the Kiev regime. Let's set aside the fact that the uh, president in charge of Kiev banned uh, his uh, um, people to negotiate peace with the Russians, and the decree remains in force. Let me ask you one more question. How can we possibly say that the Ukrainian regime remains in force? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime? Let me ask you one more question. How can we deal with the statements and guarantees of the regime?
express our thanks to Ms. Rosemary Di Carlo, Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, for our availability to brief uh, the Council. Um, Mr. President, the downing of the military transport aircraft, which uh, reportedly resulted in the loss of 74 lives, including prisoners of war, is tragic. The tragic loss of prisoners of war is sad and deplorable. Instead of being reunited with their respective families, they have instead died far away from the battlefields. Mr. President, we urge both sides to learn from this tragic incident and ensure that it does not hinder the recent progress achieved in the prisoner exchange between them. This tragedy should instead be a catalyst for de-escalation and a dialogue between the parties aimed at a lasting peace and settlement. Mozambique calls upon the two parties to immediately engage in unconditional and expeditious peace negotiations. We urge the parties to sustain the momentum from recent prisoner exchanges and move towards a ceasefire and build a mutual trust. We further urge the parties to rigorously observe international humanitarian standards in ongoing and future prisoner of war transfers in light of this tragedy. It is crucial that future prisoner exchange be carried out securely and humanely with open lines of communication between the parties in strict adherence to the Geneva Conventions. The tragic loss of lives yesterday must serve as an unequivocal reminder to all of the urgent necessity of achieving peace and understanding between the parties and in the region. I thank you, Mr. President. Je remercie le représentant du Mozambique pour sa déclaration et je donne à présent la parole au représentant des États-Unis. Thank you, Mr. President. And Under Secretary General Di Carlo, thank you for your informative briefing. Uh, let me begin by expressing condolences to all of those impacted by one man's decision to launch a war of aggression in flagrant violation of the UN Charter. We are here today because President Putin decided to invade another sovereign UN member state. Just as he started this war, he can end it. After nearly, nearly two years of a war perpetrated at Putin's behest, I repeat, this war could end today if Russia withdrew its troops from Ukraine's internationally recognized borders. Russia's rush to call for a council meeting fits a now familiar pattern right out of the Russian playbook with which we are all familiar. Russia has repeatedly attempted to shift responsibility for the tragedies of this senseless war of choice as though it is the victim and not the aggressor. While we work to gather the facts and ascertain what happened, it bears repeating that the Kremlin bears full and ultimate responsibility for starting and continuing this war. Members of the Russian Armed Forces also bear responsibility for the war crimes and other atrocities they have committed. The Russian representatives' expressions of concern and attempts to appear serious about the Council's mandate to maintain international peace and security ring hollow as Russia continues to commit aggression and unspeakable atrocities against Ukrainian citizens. As Russia's full-scale invasion 
nears its two-year mark, we call on the international community to continue its support of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The Kremlin cannot be allowed to succeed in its effort to erase an independent Ukraine from the map and subjugate its people. Thank you, Mr. President. Je remercie le représentant des États-Unis de sa déclaration et je donne à présent la parole à la représentante de Malte. The military transport plane crash illustrates once again the, the disastrous consequences of Russian aggression. This is the context. If Russian troops had not invaded Ukraine, and if Russia had upheld the United Nations Charter, none of this would have happened. We reiterate our condemnation of the, Russia, of the Russian Federation's war against Ukraine, which constitutes a manifest violation of international law. Russia's ongoing campaign of systematic airstrikes against civilians and civilian infrastructure continues to bring suffering to Ukrainians. On Tuesday, Russian armed forces launched 44 missiles on cities, towns, and villages across Ukraine, which resulted in new casualties among the civilian population and the destruction of essential facilities, including medical and educational buildings. Over 200 different objects were damaged, 18 people were killed, and more than 130 were injured. All attacks must stop. All attacks are prohibited under international law. This is yet another reminder of the dire consequences of Russia's aggression against Ukraine. The protection of civilians in armed conflict, as well as protection of prisoners of war in compliance with international law, including international humanitarian law, must be upheld. International obligations must be upheld. Civilian casualties must be avoided and civilians must be protected from harm at all times. To conclude, President, Malta once again calls for Russia to end its hostilities and withdraw its military forces, equipment and proxies. The maintenance of international peace and security can only be ensured through a comprehensive, just and lasting peace in Ukraine. We will continue we will continue to stand with Ukraine and its people in the fights they have been waging for for over two years to exert their right to self-defense and preserve their, in their territorial integrity and sovereignty. I thank you. Je remercie la représentante de Malte pour sa déclaration et je donne à présent la parole à la représentante du Guyana. Thank you, Mr. President, and I thank USG Di Carlo for the briefing provided. We are saddened to hear reports that 74 lives were lost in the plane crash yesterday in the region of Belgorod. We take note that the full circumstances of the crash are yet to be determined and hope that the results of the investigations will soon be made available. We deeply regret that lives continue to be lost every day in this war that should never have been. We especially lament the fact that many more will continue to suffer each day that it continues. Living in constant fear and with shattered lives and dreams about how life would be, regardless of which side of the front lines they represent, precious lives continue to be lost. My delegation reiterates its call for an immediate end to this war and the withdrawal of Russian military forces from the territory of Ukraine. The death and destruction wrought on civilians over the past two years must end. From the mass destruction of cities to prolonged economic, social, and psychological impacts, the trauma and residual effects of this war will be acutely felt for years to come. In this vein, we also reiterate our call for the parties to comply with their obligations on the international law and international humanitarian law and to guarantee protection for those who are most vulnerable, including women and children. Finally, we again urge the parties to commit to a serious political and diplomatic process toward ending this conflict and the continued engagement of the international community to this end. I thank you.
Je remercie la représentante du Guyana de sa déclaration. Et je donne à présent la parole au représentant de la République de Corée. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me begin by thanking USG Rosemary De Carlo for your briefing. Since the Russian Federation began its illegal invasion of Ukraine, we have been witnessing all kinds of human suffering occurring every day for almost two years. At this juncture, we have now witnessed yet another tragedy caused by this war. From a humanitarian perspective, the Republic of Korea emphasizes the need to comply with international norms related to the protection of prisoners of war and the civilians at all times. Regarding the crash of the Russian military plane Illusion 76 in the Belgorod region near Ukraine border on 24 January, my delegation regrets the loss of life of all who were on board. At the same time, we also note that there are discrepancies between the positions of Russia in Ukraine, and the facts are unclear at this point. Under these circumstances, more information is needed to be determined the actual cause and results of this tragedy at this time. My delegation hopes that the full picture of this instance will become clear through a fair investigation based on facts. It was reported that on the same day, Ukraine and Russia were both pursuing the exchange of POWs, which was not realized. From a humanitarian perspective, we hope that this instance will not negatively impact any potential future exchange of POWs between the two sides. Mr. President, it is unbearable to watch tragic events occur repeatedly as the war continues. In this regard, my delegation once again urges the Russian Federation to immediately withdraw its military forces from the territory of Ukraine and to put an end to this brutal war. Ukraine's sovereignty, political in independence, and ter territorial integrity should be respected. In concluding, I reaffirm that the Republic of Korea is firmly committed to working with the international community towards a lasting peace in Ukraine in line with the UN Charter and relevant UN resolutions. I thank you. Je remercie le représentant de la République de Corée pour sa déclaration et je donne à présent la parole au représentant de la Suisse. Monsieur le Président, je remercie la secrétaire générale adjointe pour son exposé. La Suisse prend note des informations concernant un avion militaire qui s'est écrasé dans la région de Belgorod, près de la frontière ukrainienne hier. À l'heure actuelle, nous ne disposons pas d'informations fiables sur cet incident. Il est crucial que les faits soient établis d'une manière approfondie, transparente et indépendante. Ici, nous rappelons que la Commission internationale humanitaire d'établissement de paix se tient en tout temps à la disposition des parties en conflit pour clarifier les circonstances. Nous nous appelons chacun à chacune d'éviter les spéculations, les accusations et conclusions hâtives qui ne font qu'exacerber les tensions existantes. Sans préjuger des conclusions détaillées, je souhaite saisir l'occasion pour réitérer trois messages clés. Premièrement, depuis plus de 700 jours, l'agression militaire russe cause des souffrances et des destructions incommensurables. Si cette agression militaire n'avait pas eu lieu, nous ne serions pas en train de discuter d'incidents tels que celui qui nous réunit aujourd'hui. Nous déplorons les pertes des vies humaines résultant de cette guerre insensée et appelons la Russie à cesser toutes ses opérations de combat et à retirer ses troupes de l'Ukraine. Deuxièmement, le droit international humanitaire doit être respecté inconditionnellement par toutes les parties au conflit. Il accorde une protection cruciale aux personnes qui ne participent pas ou plus aux hostilités, tels que les civils, les combattants blessés et les prisonniers de guerre. Nous rappelons qu'en vertu des conventions de Genève, les prisonniers de guerre doivent être protégés contre les dangers découlant des opérations militaires. La responsabilité première d'assurer leur sécurité, y compris pendant des transports, incombe à la puissance économique. 
Nous soutenons les efforts d'échange de prisonniers de guerre et invitons les partis à les poursuivre. Troisièmement, en lien avec les deux premiers points, nous exhortons la Russie de cesser les vagues attaques de missiles et de drones qui continuent de faire des victimes civiles et de causer des dommages importants à des infrastructures civiles. Cette semaine encore, dans plusieurs endroits en Ukraine, notamment à Kiev, à Kharkiv et dans la région de Dniepropetrovsk. Il est urgent de redoubler les efforts pour parvenir à une paix globale je remercie le premier représentant de la Chine de cette déclaration et je donne la parole au représentant de la Chine. Mr. President, I thank Under Secretary General Di Carlo for her briefing. This morning, the Security Council just deliberated under the topic of weapons supply to Ukraine. Today, we meet again in an emergency session on the incident of the crash of a Russian military transport aircraft, resulting in significant casualties. As stated in the briefing, it is reported that the Russian aircraft carrying prisoners of war en route to hand over to Ukraine was downed, and all the people on board were killed in this grave disaster. Wars have wars and conflicts are bottom line. China expressed its grave concern over this tragic event and strongly urges relevant parties to strictly abide by relevant international law and international conventions, safeguarding the lives and basic rights of prisoners of war and prevent such tragedy from happening again. The development of the Ukraine crisis has demonstrated over and over again that conflicts or confrontation produce no winners. Dialogue and negotiation represent the only viable way out of any crisis. Sending weapons to the battlefield is not conducive to the achievement of peace. China calls on relevant parties to strengthen direct engagement and dialogue, gradually resume negotiation and accumulate consensus, while the international community demonstrates greater urgency and strengthen diplomatic mediation in a collective effort towards de-escalation and the political solution. On the issue of Ukraine, China has all along stood on the side of peace and dialogue and been committed to peace negotiations and ending hostilities. We wish to maintain communication with all parties and will make unremitting efforts towards a political solution to the crisis. I thank you, President. I remercie the representative of China for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Ecuador. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, President. I wish to start by just appreciating the briefing by the Secretary General of the United States, Rosemary Di Carlo, for the Peace Council and the Peace Council. I also welcome the participation of Ukraine today. We are meeting in this chamber for the third time in 72 hours to discuss the repercussions of the Russian military offensive in Ukraine. Initiated in February 2022, it began in February 2022. Recently, according to reports, there has been a new tragedy in the new tragedy avión de transporte militar que habría resultado en la trágica pérdida de 74 vidas, incluyendo 65 prisioneros de guerra ucranianos y una tripulación de seis personas y tres militares rusos. De confirmarse, este evento no solo sería una tragedia humana, sino un reflejo doloroso de los efectos devastadores y de largo alcance de la guerra. Es esencial que se realice una investigación completa y transparente sobre este incidente para esclarecer las circunstancias y garantizar que se rindan cuentas. Resalto la necesidad de que las partes respeten el derecho internacional humanitario y se asegure el trato digno y humanitario de los prisioneros de guerra. De la misma manera, el Ecuador lamenta los recientes reportes sobre ataques con misiles rusos en varias ciudades y pueblos ucranianos que han resultado en la pérdida de vidas civiles, incluyendo niños, como la destrucción de infraestructuras civiles. Todos los ataques contra civiles e infraestructuras civiles son inaceptables y deben cesar inmediatamente. Es imperativo que las partes respeten irrestrictamente sus obligaciones que derivan del derecho internacional humanitario, incluyendo los principios de distinción, proporcionalidad y precaución. Señor Presidente, colegas, la guerra en Ucrania ha causado estragos y sufrimiento. 
no solo para aquellos directamente involucrados, sino para el mundo entero. Vivimos un momento de tensión geopolítica significativa donde los efectos de este conflicto trascienden fronteras y amenazan la estabilidad y seguridad internacional. Repito lo que he dicho en varias ocasiones. Nos preocupa que la lógica militar se perenice e impida el diálogo y la negociación. Recordemos que sigue vigente la declaración de presidencia del Consejo de Seguridad PS barra PRST barra 2022 barra 3 del 6 de mayo del 2022 por la cual este órgano recordó que en virtud de la Carta de las Naciones Unidas todos los Estados miembros han asumido obligaciones de arreglar sus controversias internacionales por medios pacíficos. Quiero concluir reiterando a las partes que esta guerra debe acabar. Es imperativo que se permita el alto al fuego realista encaminado hacia una paz justa y duradera sobre la base de los principios de la Carta de Naciones Unidas. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Je remercie le représentant de l'Équateur de sa déclaration et je donne à présent la parole au représentant de la Sierra Leone. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I thank you for convening this meeting. I also thank you, as you, Rosemary de Carlo, for the briefing. Sierra Leone reiterates the sobering message that we are once more convened to consider a situation that is sad, sorrowful, and regretful because we have an ongoing conflict in Ukraine. The reported tragic incident, the downing of a Russian military plane on 24th January 2024, which based on a report has led to the death of 65 Ukrainian prisoners of war, six Russian crew members, and three military personnel. One can only imagine the human spirit of hope felt by the reported said prisoners of war on the prospect of the exchange, even amidst the tragedy of the war. One can only imagine the fate and emotional state of their families, learning of the tragic fate of those who lost their lives. But we are not in the Security Council to imagine the Security Council has a specific mandate. Therefore, as members, we have to reiterate the principles which we all have subscribed to in the Charter of the United Nations. In this regard, Sierra Leone reiterates its call for the full respect of the national sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. We also reiterate our call for the immediate cessation of the hostilities and urge for good faith diplomatic efforts to resolve the conflict. This also means addressing the legitimate concerns of all involved parties. Mr. President, as reported by the Russian Federation, the said military aircraft, a military transport plane, was shot down over Russia's Belgorod region by Ukraine's anti-missile, aircraft missile. It was reported to be carrying, as I said, 65 Ukrainian POWs, six Russian crew members, and three soldiers. It was reported that the aircraft was en route to a scheduled exchange of prisoners of war. Although reports from Ukraine indicate that a prisoner of war exchange was scheduled, it reported that it lacked reliable and comprehensive information about the identity of those on board the downed plane. Ukraine has also reported that the Russian Federation did not communicate information and the need to secure safe airspace over the Belgorod region. Accordingly, Sierra Leone will make the following critical observations. Firstly, we acknowledge and welcome the exchanges of prisoners of war by the parties to the conflict. We particularly commend the United Arab Emirates for facilitating the exchange this month that led to the release of 478 prisoners. Even with the sad incident, we entreat the parties to continue with these meaningful steps and undertake prisoner of war exchanges as provided for under international law. 
Secondly, we urge the parties to the conflict to comply with their obligations under international law, especially international humanitarian law and certainly on the treatment of prisoners of war. Thirdly, we urge and call for accountability, accountability for violations of international law, perpetration of prohibited conduct in armed conflict. And in this regard, we call for an independent and impartial investigation of the incident and the circumstances surrounding it. Let me conclude by emphasizing the importance of pursuing dialogue and ending the conflict. We can only imagine the Security Council be convened again to consider the situation in Ukraine for another sad, tragic, and regrettable incident if the conflict is not ended by peaceful means. I thank you. Je remercie le représentant de la Sierra Leone de ses déclarations et je donne à présent la parole au représentant de la Slovénie. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I would also like to thank Under Secretary General Rosemary De Carlo for, for her briefing. Um, it is extremely challenging uh, to have an informed discussion, especially on the security, <clears throat> on the peace and security, when, when uh, only unverified information is available. <clears throat> And we also understand the difficulties surrounding the organization of such meetings. At the moment, we are aware of only one fact. A military transport airplane crashed during an armed conflict. We don't know what it was carrying and whether it was shut down. And my delegation would welcome independently verified information on the event. On the other hand, we have ample independently verified information on violations of international law including humanitarian human rights law in Ukraine by Russian Federation. And this include indiscriminate attacks on civilians and critical infrastructure and gross violations on human rights. Mr. President, it is our sincere hope this, that this episode of the war on Ukraine will not stand in the way of future exchanges of prisoners of war between the two countries. Even in the absence of impartial and verified information, it sadly has to be concluded that new names will be added to the long list of casualties that has been growing since February 2022. Slovenia regrets any loss of life, be it civilian or military, during any armed conflict. And I would like to convey our deepest condolences to the families who lost their loved ones in this event, which was another tragic consequence of unnecessary war of aggression against Ukraine. Thank you. Je remercie le représentant de la Slovénie de sa déclaration et je donne à présent la parole à la représentante du Japon. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for convening this. Thank you for coordinating to convene this meeting. I also thank USG Di Carlo for her briefing. Mr. President, we are aware of reports that the Russian military aircraft has crashed in Russian territory. The Ukrainian side has understandably stated that it would take time to evaluate this incident. The Security Council bears the responsibility to address issues affecting international peace and security. In order to fulfill this function, the Council needs to have facts before it. We should not engage in speculation without any objective information. Mr. President, we must not lose sight of why we have assembled here today. Russia requested that an urgent briefing be scheduled today, claiming that the downing of its military plane in a war of aggression against Ukraine, which Russia initiated, be on the Security Council's agenda for this discussion. Are they doing this, knowing that so many innocent Ukrainians have been killed on the Ukrainian soil by Russia's indiscriminate attacks. It is obvious that if Russia had not violated the United Nations Charter by starting its aggression against Ukraine in the first place, such a situation would not have arisen. Therefore, Japan once again urges Russia to stop its aggression and immediately and unconditionally withdraw from the entire internationally recognized territory of Ukraine. Japan will continue to stand with Ukraine as long as it takes. I thank you.
Je remercie mm. la représentante du Japon Japan de sa déclaration et je donne la parole aux représentants du Royaume-Uni. President, the UK regrets all loss of human life wherever it occurs. We fully support Ukraine's calm and measured response to this aircraft incident and agree there is an urgent need to establish the facts, as President Zelensky has said. Whilst it is too early to draw conclusions, one thing is clear. When President Putin made the decision to illegally invade Ukraine, he demonstrated his total disregard the value of human life, including his own citizens. We would not be in this position, and incidents like this would not happen, if it were not for Russia's full-scale illegal invasion in February 2022. A sovereign, independent Ukraine did not, and does not, pose a threat to Russia. Ukrainians want and deserve to live in peace and security, and without interference, from their largest neighbor. Hundreds of thousands of lives have been lost in this war, including over 300,000 Russian soldiers dead and injured, and tens of thousands of Ukrainian civilians killed. Soon, this pointless conflict will have lasted two years. Russia can choose to end the bloodshed. It can withdraw all its military personnel from the internationally recognized borders of Ukraine. And as a permanent member of this council, it can uphold the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. Thank you. Je remercie le représentant du Royaume-Uni de sa déclaration et je donne à présent la parole au représentant de l'Algérie. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank Under Secretary General Rosemary Di Caro for her briefing. Two weeks ago, in the same chamber, Algeria expressed concern over the escalation of tensions and the continued loss of lives. Such unfortunate developments are only pushing further any prospect of peaceful settlement of this crisis. And here we are today, after the, the deadly incident of Russian military transport aircraft with 74 persons on board. Allow me to extend my sincere condolences to the families of all victims. If this incident did not occur, the soldiers that lost their lives today would have been freed and the airplane crew back home. The Council would have likely welcomed the exchange of prisoners between Russia and Ukraine as a positive gesture. Unfortunately, this is not the case. We are rather urgently gathering today with more acute concern. More concerned about the logic of confrontation prevailing in this crisis. More concerned about the increasing polarizations. More concerned about the lack of perspective for inclusive and constructive dialogue and negotiations. We are once again calling up all parties to exercise restraint and to prioritize political dialogue for the sake of just and lasting peace. The principle of the UN Charter need to be upheld in this regard. Will taking into account the legitimate security concerns of all parties. The international community is also called to promote and intensify further diplomatic effort to achieve peace. We stand ready to contribute to any endeavor to promote inclusive and constructive dialogue as soon as the party are ready to engage in genuine negotiation. I thank you. Je remercie le représentant de l'Algérie pour sa déclaration. Je vais maintenant faire une déclaration en ma qualité de représentant de la France. Je remercie 
Madame Di Carlo, pour son exposé. Le 24 février 2022, la Russie a lancé une agression à grande échelle contre l'Ukraine, alors que depuis huit ans déjà, elle occupait la Crimée et alimentait la guerre dans le Donbass. Les conséquences négatives découlant de cette agression, dont la Russie porte seule l'entière responsabilité, ne cesse de se multiplier. Chaque jour, à même l'annonce d'un nouveau drame accompagné de son cortège de victimes. Nous avons appris hier qu'un avion militaire russe était écrasé dans la région de Belgorod, limitrophe de l'Ukraine, et c'est la raison pour laquelle ce Conseil se réunit aujourd'hui en urgence. Il n'y a ou il n'y aurait pas de survivants. Nous savons également sans pouvoir dire avec certitude s'il y a un lien entre ces deux événements, qu'un échange de prisonniers de guerre devait avoir lieu ce même jour. La Russie affirme que l'avion transportait les prisonniers ukrainiens. Il est important de faire toute la lumière sur ces événements. En tout état de cause, il est difficilement soutenable d'entendre la Russie se désoler du sort des prisonniers de guerre ukrainiens. Au lieu de convoquer des réunions pour chercher à inverser l'ordre des responsabilités, elle devrait devrait agir, cesser son agression, arrêter ses frappes contre les infrastructures civiles et retirer ses troupes du territoire ukrainien, comme le lui ont demandé la Cour internationale de justice dès le 16 mars 2022 et l'Assemblée générale des Nations unies à plusieurs reprises. La débauche de moyens que la Russie met au service de sa propagande est assez Il est intéressant de noter que le représentant russe cite le cas du MH17 de 2014, tragédie au cours de laquelle des dizaines de ressortissants australiens et néerlandais, plus issus d'autres pays en péril. Je tiens à rappeler à l'attention du Conseil de sécurité que le 17 novembre 2022, le tribunal de La Haye a pris une procédure d'un professionnalisme exemplaire a condamné deux ressortissants russes et un ressortissant ukrainien pro-russe issu du Donbass. Que la Russie concentre ses efforts sur la seule urgence, arrêter sa guerre d'agression. Je passe désormais la parole à la représentante de l'Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. President, Under Secretary General, uh, distinguished members of the Security Council. I also recognize here the representative of Putin's regime in the permanent seat of the Soviet Union. For almost 10 years since his country has started its aggression by occupying Ukrainian Crimea, for almost two years since his country launched full-scale war against Ukraine, we have seen so many times that Russia is ready to commit any crime and any provocation to justify its violations and to divert our attention from the basic issue that the only root cause of all atrocities, all deaths and destruction is the Russian war of aggression and its intention to destroy Ukraine's statehood. Russia started its unjust, unprovoked and genocidal war and Russia bears full responsibility for all atrocities, deaths and destruction caused by the war. It is clear already that Russia is unable to achieve substantial results on the battlefield. This month, the Russian Federation continued its missile terror on Ukrainian cities. It carries out the largest number of missile attacks on Kharkiv and the Kharkiv region located near the Russian border. In the last week alone, Russia launched 19 missile strikes on the Bau region, using at least 26 S-300 and three Iskander missiles. As a result of these attacks, 16 people, including one child, were killed, 78 wanted. The 10 buildings were destroyed, including one hospital, three educational institutions, and six residential buildings. The Russian Federation must immediately stop shelling Ukrainian cities. Russia has deliberately turned the Belgorod region into a springboard for missile terror against Kharkiv, a city of over a million people. A quarter of the city has already been destroyed by Russian strikes. Any state within the limits of international law will take all possible measures to protect its people and infrastructure. The armed forces of Ukraine are taking all necessary measures to protect the civilian population from Russian missile attacks as well as to reduce the missile threat stemming from Russia, especially from the Belgorod region. 
To this end, the Ukrainian forces not only control the airspace, but also closely monitor the missile launch sites and logistics of their supply chains, including the use of military transport aviation. The intensity of Russian shelling on the Kharkiv region is directly related to the increased number of military transport aircraft, including IL-76, that have been heading to Belgorod airport recently. Taking this into account, the armed forces of Ukraine will continue to take measures to destroy delivery means and control the airspace to eliminate the terrorist threat, in particular the belgorod kharkiv direction. Let me remind you that according to the laws of warfare, military transport aircraft of the armed forces of the Russian Federation is a legitimate military target. Mr. President, on 24th January 2024, a prisoners of war exchange between Ukraine and Russia was supposed to take place, but it did not happen. The Ukrainian side fulfilled its obligations. Russian POVs were timely transferred to the agreed location and were waiting in safety for the exchange. The Russian side was supposed to ensure the same level of safety of the Ukrainian captured servicemen. At the same time, the Ukrainian side was not informed of the need to secure the airspace in the area of Belgorod city during this specified period, as has been done repeatedly in the past. The situation we are dealing with effectively took place in several regions. Ukraine was not informed about the number of vehicles, routes, and means of transportation of the captives. This alone may constitute intentional actions by Russia to endanger the lives and safety of the prisoners. The landing of a transport aircraft in a 30-kilometer zone of combat operations possess a danger to the entire exchange process, and the Russia, as the, responsible, as the responsible for the safety of the POV's site, should take all necessary measures, including to inform of all transfer-related details in the war zone and its proximity to comply with all relevant international provisions. Since 2014, Moscow has used civilians as human shields in the Crimea and the Donbas. This Russian practice was repeatedly recorded on the ground when Russian soldiers physically covered themselves with Ukrainian prisoners and opened fire from behind their backs. This is a common tactic for Russia that violates the norms of the international humanitarian law. Russian propaganda was suspiciously fast in translating instant statements about the shooting down of a Russian IL-76 aircraft that had allegedly transported Ukrainian POVs. All the details of the plane crash are being investigated by the Ukrainian authorities. At the same time, if the information that there were Ukrainian prisoners of war on board is confirmed, we will have another confirmation of gross violation of international humanitarian law by Russia, and the first case of Russia using a human shield in the air to cover the transportation of missiles for their further use against peaceful Ukrainian cities. According to Article 46 of the Geneva Convention relative to the treatment of prisoners of war, the detaining power shall take adequate precautions, especially in the case of transport by sea or by air, to ensure their safety during transfer. The Security Service of Ukraine registered a criminal proceeding on the basis that the military political leadership of the Russian Federation also violated Article 130 of the Abao Convention failing to ensure the safety of prisoners of war during transportation and used an object for transportation that is a legitimate target due to its military use. Taking into account all the presented facts, Ukraine emphasizes that in accordance with international law, Russia bears full responsibility for the lives of Ukrainian prisoners of war. We insist on conducting an international investigation to establish all the circumstances of this incident. Mr. President, Russia is directly responsible for the aggression against Ukraine. The Russian state is the world's largest organized source of terror. Russia and its leadership must be held to the strictest responsibility for every manifestation of this terror. There would not have been a single loss among Ukrainians if Putin had not given the order to start the war. It is obvious that the Russians are messing with the lives of Ukrainian captives the feelings of their relatives, and the emotions of the Ukrainian society. It is necessary to establish all clear facts to the extent possible given that the aircraft crashed on Russian territory is beyond our control. 
facts is the key word now. The Ukrainian authorities are investigating all circumstances and the fate of all prisoners. It speaks volumes that the Kremlin, as, a, as follows from the statement by Putin's spokesperson, has effectively rejected the idea of a transparent and impartial international investigation. The SCO insists that only a preju prejudiced investigation to confirm the Russian version of so-called Ukrainian crime will be allowed. The Kremlin's goal is clear, to keep the narrative about the situation within the framework of their version. Ukrainian military intelligence does not rule out that several senior military and political officials should have been on board, but were instead told by the Russian Federal Security Service to use other means of transportation. Following the plane crash, the Federal Security Service and the Russian military did not allow emergency workers to inspect the crash site as per protocol. According to our military intelligence, only five bodies were sent to the local morgue in Belgorod, and no human remains are visible on videos from the crash site. We reiterate that there is only one way to stop the scourge of war, to stop the war itself. The Russian Federation should make the only just decision as outlined by the UN, UN resolution of 23rd February last year, principles of the Charter of the United Nations underlining comprehensive just and lasting peace in Ukraine. Russia must cease its aggression, withdraw its troops from the territory of Ukraine, and prepare for what usually follows the end of the war, accountability and reparations. Thank you. Je remercie la représentante right, de l'Ukraine de sa déclaration. Ukraine Le représentant de la Fédération de Russie euh, a souhaité Federation. faire une nouvelle uh, déclaration et je lui statement. redonne la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I did not uh, originally intend to comment on Ukrainian Ukrainian uh, statement. Of course, it's, uh, it's a, um, nonsense, paranoid nonsense. Let me just say that uh, I understand that my colleague was told to continue with the lies and shielding of the Kiev regime. The lists have been um, published, and uh, they were conveyed to the Ukrainian side following the procedure, as was done many times before, and it's pointless to try and deny that. Um, contrary by the way to the list of the victims of Bucha, which we're still trying to obtain and have been unable to do so, and we keep saying, talking about this, but that's not what I wanted to, to, to talk about. I wanted to react uh, to what you mentioned, Mr. President, in your statement about the crash of the Malaysian MH17 in 2014. And uh, traditionally, following the Western hypocritical tradition, you place the blame for this tragedy on Russia. Let me just uh, briefly recall the um, incontrovertible facts that you all trying to ignore. After the disaster, it was Russia who kept insisting on international impartial um, investigation and was at the inception of the resolution 2166 on this by the Security Council. And we helped the Netherlands as much as we could and always reacted to requests for legal, for legal assistance and did that swiftly. Unlike Ukraine and the United States, we forwarded the information which was of critical importance to determine who was to blame. Our information was never made part of the proceedings. At the same time, um, there were a lot of questions about the biased approach by the joint investigative group. We were therefore not uh, surprised by the um, biased decision of the district court in The Hague. It was obvious to us that outcome of the work of the group and the judicial proceedings were aimed exclusively at making making sure that the evidence fit the only one version which is beneficial to West, to the West, that the Russia was um, involved in this. By playing along with the Kiev regime, its accomplices have discredited themselves completely. They close their eyes to the most egregious discrepancies and the outright lies by Kiev in the process. In particular, it is not uh, logical uh, um, here um, if you consider that the um, airspace was not closed above the area of conflict in violation of international law. And this uh, shows that there was a political bias on the part of those who conducted the investigation. This year will be a 10-year anniversary of the, of the tragedy, but nothing's changed. And the West, uh, for their reasons, are just...
justifying any crimes committed by their Kiev puppets, trying to blame Russia, even when the facts are showing that it's exactly the opposite. Let me underscore here that punishing the, those responsible for the tragedy of MH17, who in actual fact were and still are in Kiev, um, that, that this has nothing to do with the political performance that will be, is being played out. Thank you. Je remercie le représentant de la Fédération de Russie de sa déclaration. Il n'y a plus d'oratrice ou d'orateur inscrit sur la liste. La séance est levée.